Hey everybody, this is Isaac Brooks back with another video. And today, we're going to be doing something a little different. Uh, instead of um, kind of reviewing slash going over results of um, a wrestling event, because there wasn't much of a, wasn't it wasn't one, that was pretty recent, that I would have seen to even give any of that kind of thing about. So today we're going to be going over uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie since I just finally got a chance to watch it yesterday. Since it's uh, now on DVD, Blu-ray and all that stuff. But before I get into that, I'd like to uh, send out a congratulations message to uh, all the 2023 high school graduates, especially my uh, cousin Julian. <clears throat> Would have been there to support him in person, but school's at max capacity, so there's nothing to really do about that. But either way, yeah, congratulations to everybody who's graduated, and uh, hope you uh, do great things with your futures and uh, do whatever makes you happy along with that. Whether it's uh, pursuing your dream job or just having a job just to get by. Anything along those lines, I uh, hope it all works out for you. But let's get into the main topic of this video, which is the Super Mario Bros. movie. Like I said, I uh, watched it yesterday, and wow. <laughs> I mean, I've heard a lot of good reviews about it, but in my opinion, a lot of those reviews didn't really do it justice. I mean... It was definitely a much better all-around uh, Mario movie overall than the complete utter abomination that was the live-action one. The less said about that one, the better. But if you like it, that's fine. Just don't force it upon me. Oh yeah, this animated one, very, very good. If anybody hasn't seen it, I recommend it. But yeah, it's, uh, with all the reports of the casting that came out beforehand, a lot of it was like, really, the guy, Chris Pratt playing Mario? I mean, yeah, it, it was still... Uh, weird not hearing the more traditional Mario voice or any of the traditional character voices for that matter but you know it it did it did all right I'll can consider with that uh, area Jack Black completely stealing the sh stealing the show is Bowser and uh, a bunch of the other characters doing really well. Animation was great, which coming from anime illumination is uh, usually expected, even though some of their movies don't have the best track record, considering who you ask. 
or it depends on who you ask, rather, whatever the saying is. Um, but yeah, it was definitely quite the uh, roller coaster start to finish. I mean, straight into the action at the start with uh, Bowser Digging with the Ice Kingdom. And I know this movie's been out for quite a while now, but still gonna try to be careful how much I spoil anything. So, yeah, I'll just uh, do the basic uh, rundown of it. So yeah, Bowser invades Ice, Ice Kingdom, uh, takes the Power Star from there, which really, no, which really um, is confusing because you would think there'd be more Power Stars than that than just the one in the Ice Kingdom, but... You know, it is what it is. They'll probably uh, expand on that a little more in sequels, because with the amount of uh, money that the first one's made, you can definitely guarantee there's going to be one or two or more sequels. But yeah, after they showed Bowser doing his thing, they jumped right into the Mario Brothers plumbing commercial, which is the only time in the movie where they had uh, Chris Pratt and Charlie Day even trying to replicate the uh, traditional "It's a me" kind of a uh, voice. There on from that, it was basically just uh, Chris Pratt doing a attempt at a Brooklyn accent and Charlie Day just being Charlie Day. And they had the one of many cameos afterwards with a, a character that looked kind of like the original Mario design with the original Mario voice actor Charles Martinet playing that role along with one other role in the film being uh, Mario Luigi's dad and uh Mario and Luigi go uh, get into a confrontation with Spike, their former boss. Um, then they get a call for uh, a plumbing job, in which the owners have uh, a seemingly nice dog until Luigi breaks its favorite bone. And can't we just say that Luigi got the raw deal in this movie? I mean, he was given a decent amount of screen time, but it's the Mario Brothers movie. You'd think they would have been doing the adventure together. But the way they did it made sense, I guess, but hopefully in the sequel they give Luigi more screen time. Anyway, uh, yeah, Mario and Luigi fixed, their, fixed the issue at that house at first and then a lot of chaos ensues there because of the dog and then they get to see like Mario and Luigi having a dinner with their family getting berated by the commercial and their mom supports them for it supports the commercial not the berating uh, their dad was like, I don't think it was a smart move to do all that. Saying, he, saying Mario is basically weighing Luigi down. Of course, that led Mario to storm off a little bit. 
So, a little bit after that. Luigi comforts him, and then they see another issue on the news with, like, a big kind of flood. And they go to try to fix that. Excuse me. Um, and they try to, but they end up um, finding area underground that would lead to the pipe that brings them to the Mushroom Kingdom and the Dark Kingdom respectively. Darklands as it was called in the movie. Um, and the opening that they went through to get to that spot was very reminiscent of the old school pixelated Mario head, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, they uh, enter that green pipe, the traditional green pipe. Uh, Mario ensures Luigi everything's going to be okay as long as they're together. And then at that point they get separated. Luigi ends up in Bowser's kingdom as Mario ends up in the uh, Mushroom Kingdom and meets Toad and begins the adventure to find Luigi. Meet up with the princess, who in this movie is definitely not the typical damsel in distress, a little more of a independent do things her own way to have a ruler, which makes sense in a way, because I guess they wanted to uh, give the female portion of the audience someone to relate to, or look up to, which works, I guess. So they have... Mario doing a training montage a little after that, and then, they see, and then we see Luigi uh, <clears throat> being all scared, trying to traverse his way through the Dark Lands. Running into some dry bones and shy guys before getting captured and taken over to Bowser. And as we see the shy guys getting Luigi into a hot air balloon, we get a flashback of a uh, when Mario and Luigi were babies. And you can see that Mario is very supportive of Luigi even at that point. So, that part was nice. I like that. Um, wasn't the only younger version of a character we saw in a flashback. We'll get to that later. Uh... Yeah, after Mario gets the training montage, uh, go on to basically the Donkey Kong Island or Kingdom, whatever they had it be, um, to try to get the Kong army on their side to battle against Bowser. And Toad joined them. As soon as they get to the Kong Kingdom, they get greeted by a gorilla in a sports coat. Yeah, a gorilla in a sports coat. That's something that exists. Uh, who takes them to, I guess, kind of like a castle kind of area ruled by uh, Cranky Kong <clears throat> via a uh, cart transport. Um, and Cranky Kong tells them that the only way they can use the Kong army for help is, uh, if Mario can, uh, defeat Donkey Kong in battle. 
and to make sure the battle lasted a little longer, they gave Mario the use of power-ups. In which, uh, two were used, I believe. The mini mushroom and the, uh, the cat bell. Even though Mario tried to get to the, um, fire flower, which we saw Peach use a little bit in the film earlier. To create a fire, obviously. And go over her origins. And have her little, uh, younger baby self flashback. Sort of explaining, kind of not at the same time, explaining how she came to become the princess of the Mushroom Kingdom. And of course, sometime in there, in the runtime, they had Jack Black's uh, Peaches song, which has definitely been uh, spreading like wildfire on the internet. Bunch of covers and stuff like that already. Which, honestly, I expected, but honestly, not to the same extent as it is. Yeah, um, and they had the whole Luigi getting tortured by Bowser thing, Bowser trying to get information about Mario and whether or not Peach might or might, or might not find Mario attractive. Because they're really trying to drive the point home that Bowser was in love with Peach. If anything, it was more like lust. Just trying to get their relationship because of power. <clears throat> but I'm sure there was probably like some amount of love in there, at least on Bowser's end. Because Peach was like, uh-uh. Wasn't having, wasn't, wasn't having any of it. Peach was not. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Mario defeats Hong Kong in battle. Gets the Kong army to help out. Mario, Peach, and Toad get to, uh, a location where they can get carts, or in Peach's case, a motorcycle to get their get themselves to uh, Bowser's kingdom a little faster and during that scene they get to use get to ride on the rainbow road which was really awesome be pretty cool to see that version of the rainbow road included in a uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's uh, DLC which I'm sure Nintendo uh it's probably either thought of or finding a way to implement. Um, so a bunch of others goons try to intervene, and they come very close, especially with a uh, the spiny blue shell. Which, for any of us that have played uh, Mario Kart, know how much of a absolute pain that item is. Um, we get Mario and Donkey Kong get wiped off the course. Presumed to be gone. By Cranky Kong and Peach, but obviously they weren't. They were just underwater and almost eaten by an eel. Until they used one of the uh, 
barrel jets that was on Donkey Kong's rig to get out. All the while Peach and Toad rushed to rushed rush back to the Mushroom Kingdom to warn everybody about Bowser's incoming arrival. Bowser shows up, does his whole magical little Peach. Initially Peach is all like, no. Then Bowser was like, okay. You're gonna reject me, I'm gonna hurt this little toad here. Without basically saying that, just basically like, okay. And starts doing that. Probably forgetting some stuff from that scene, but. Anyway, uh, Peach was like, okay, okay. If you stop hurting him, I'll do it. I was like, oh, you got my word. And really, how much is that worth? Um, yeah. As soon as you get to the wedding thing, they have some Easter eggs in there. I mean, there are a bunch of Easter eggs already in the movie, like especially the antique store and Mushroom Kingdom and all that. And the pizzeria and then Brooklyn. Noteworthy Easter egg is definitely at the wedding with a Yoshi egg, which uh, definitely ties into the ending ending of the movie, like the post credit scene. Um, won't say how much, but you know, yeah, Peach utilizes a fire, not fire flower, ice flower. On Bowser after rejecting mid ceremony, or before any of it could really begin. You see, like in the background, Cranky Kong and Luigi and a bunch of the other uh, prisoners that Bowser has gotten in the course of. Uh, the runtime and beforehand. Like the penguins and that really disturbed Luma. Uh, Mario comes in and saves the day. Bowser gets all mad. Sends a bonsai bell. Mario redirects it. Get sent through the pipe, causing everybody else close enough to it to be dragged in as well. But the bullet, the, the bunzai bill exploded before it could reach the destination, which was Brooklyn. And they had a big final battle in Brooklyn, where both Mario and Luigi got to utilize star power up. And, uh,. As, he, as one would assume, the good guys win and the bad guys lose. And at the end, Bowser gets shrunken down. Kept prisoner. Or hostage, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you see the Mario Brothers... Now living in the Mushroom Kingdom, whether it be like partly or full time, don't really know. But yeah, all in all, really enjoyable movie. If anyone hasn't seen it, I recommend it pretty highly. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh just about it, aside from talking about the um, credit scenes a little bit. There was one where Bowser was continuing the Peaches song, but one of the Toads was telling him to keep it down. Had the Luma Lee um, saying a bunch of uh, kind of deep stuff, like, oh, it's over. What's left inside a void or whatever. 
And then the big Easter egg that gets a lot of people talking with the Yoshi egg. We didn't see Yoshi, but we can see that the egg looks cracking, and as the screen faded to black, we hear the trade trademark Yoshi. <clears throat> But yeah, that definitely uh, will lead up to a sequel, inevitably. And I was seeing yesterday an article saying that Illumination and Nintendo are close to a deal for a Legend of Zelda movie, which, if I'm being honest, uh, expected that kind of thing to happen, just not as fast as it has. But I guess with the popularity with... Uh, of the Mario movie, a lot more Nintendo and overall video game properties will be uh, more likely to uh, be enjoyable and get greenlit. So it'll be interesting to keep an eye out for all those. But anyway, I think that'll be just about it for this video. Um, once again, congratulations to the class of 2023 graduates. Um, good job to Nintendo and Illumination on making a really great Mario movie. And, uh, if you like this video uh, give it a thumbs up and um, if you're new to the channel consider subscribing with that all said this is Isaac Brooks signing off until next time bye